closest approach to Earth. 34 million. Exploding tires, a broken thermometer, and hot salty water to drink, all without sat phone or GPS. I crossed the Sahara Desert from Algeria to Niger and then drove into Burkina Faso to face malaria for the first time. I visited health centers to often find they had little means to cure malaria. And by the time I reached Mombasa, Kenya, I suffered shivers and fever. The malaria parasite had entered my body for the first time. I took the next available flight back to London. My search began to find an organization fighting malaria. As it became clear, malaria was the world's biggest health threat. I returned to Kenya to continue my journey to be confronted with malaria all the way through Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe. I left Africa in March 1989 to talk about the growing threat of malaria, as there was hardly attention to the biggest killer of babies and young children. I shipped my vehicle to New York. My name was put up in lights in Times Square. It was clearly time to tell the world about the threat of malaria, a forgotten disease that only affects the poorest and kills millions of children every year. It was time for a change, time to highlight the true problems of Africa. I drove across the United States, engine in Coldfoot, Alaska, just inside the Arctic Circle. My thoughts about the drive against malaria began. I spent the following seven years looking for sponsors. By September 1998, the journey began. was by first sea lord Sir Slater on board HMS Fearless in Rotterdam. So my Land Rover's below deck, it's right below here. The plan was to drive through 150 countries to make a new world record to bring global attention to malaria and raise funds to fight the most deadly disease. The first press conference was also on HMS Fearless, the second at the European Parliament Brussels then into Luxembourg, Germany, and a total of 27 European countries to talk with the press and children in schools about malaria. In March 1999, the African leg was launched by Dr. David DeBarro of the World Health Organization at the MIM conference, Durban, South Africa. Media is most important. Media helps put pressure on NGOs and governments to do more in the fight against malaria. Robertson is driving around Kenya to promote the use of insecticide treated nets. I wanted to, to protest to the world that it's not allowable that Africa should suffer so badly from malaria because it's 3,000 children every day and there's 500 million cases per year of malaria. Julia intends to make a documentary on the trip which will be broadcast across Africa during the Malaria Day celebrations. It aims to bring media attention to malaria. David will be covering 129,000 kilometers during his malaria campaign. And from Nation TV, it is good luck to David. Just a few days ago, we hit the front pages and were in several radio and television stations in Cameroon. Well, I saw everywhere people suffering from malaria. It is easy for us to get media as what we do is unique and save thousands of lives. Talking with children in schools helps to let children know how malaria is transmitted from person to person and how to prevent this transmission by sleeping under a mosquito net at night. Using screens on windows and keeping their environment free from stagnant water, the message passes home to their parents. Driving conditions in tropical Africa can be challenging. In fact, sometimes near on impossible. With mud holes six feet deep, these are the only roads to some communities. I have a winch, sand ladders, and a high lift jack if needed, and a spade to dig my way out, especially useful in northwest Cameroon. Mud holes are full of water, hiding rocks or tree trunks. The car could bottom out and smash the engine casing, because you had to take it all at speed.
It's hard to believe it, but this is one of the most important trade routes in Cameroon. In the mountains, the villages are cut off from the rest of the country to deliver new supplies and vital necessities by heavy trucks, it's almost impossible. Although there is also a positive side, the logging companies don't have access here either, so the forest around this road remains intact for now. Just the light alone can turn the dark to daylight. David's quest brings him to the most remote villages, always helped by the local people. This is actually the original Trans-African Highway in the northwest of Cameroon and the road goes from um, Ikok in Nigeria through to Central African Republic. This is the shortest way through, it's driving through the mountains and the roads aren't at all maintained because it's totally inaccessible. Africa's potholed muddy roads will not stop David, nor his determination to fight for prevention and treatment against malaria for Africa's poorest. Each day brings new battles for his personal safety and well-being, as well as for the fight against malaria. This is David Robertson's daily challenge. This is his chosen life. But I am not on my own. Everywhere people are here to help. The military to hand out nets along with Lord Mayors and village chiefs and armies of volunteers. We form convoys of vehicles, use 40-foot container trucks, UN planes and even the Royal Navy. This is why the drive against malaria is so successful and saves thousands of lives every year.